Um, let me get you to come back to um, what you were just what you were saying before about about the ruble and, and the shrinking of the Russian economy. Because I'm trying to understand this. There were reports that the Russian central um, Russian central bank had a, a huge cash reserve of 640 billion dollars to defend its currency. Um, a lot of the sanctions have made it really difficult for them to use that. But how it, how were they able to or hoping to use that six hundred billion forty billion dollars to prop up the ruble? Or am I or am I not thinking of that correctly? No, you are. You definitely are, Jonathan. And um, as you know, I was here at Treasury in 2014 when we um, used sanctions um, against Russia when they um, invaded Crimea. And after that, the Russian Central Bank and the Kremlin decided to build up a war chest in order to better protect their economy in case they decided to take action similar to the actions they're taking today. Um, but we were prepared to respond to that by ensuring that their war chest, which they had built up to deal with this, was in lots of ways inoperable by working again with our allies and partners to make it impossible for them to be in a position where they could buy rubles internationally. So the actions we took over the weekend by banning transactions with the Russian Central Bank in the United States, in the UK, in Canada, in the EU, and in Japan have made that war chest Im immobile and has put them in a position where they have entered an acute financial crisis and they have now shut down capital markets because well, what they saw happening was anyone who could leave Russia's financial system was taking money out so quickly that they couldn't stop it. So now they've shut down their equities trading, debt trading, and they've made it incredibly hard for anyone to take money out of Russia. Ultimately, President Putin has a choice. He can continue the invasion of Ukraine and will continue to put pressure on the Russian economy in order to degrade his ability to pay for his war in Ukraine, or he can choose to invest in his economy and his financial institutions in order to grow the Russian economy. 